come into his presence singing Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Come into his presence singing Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Come into his presence singing Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord. Well, come into his presence singing Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord. Come into his presence singing worthy the Lamb, worthy the Lamb, worthy the lamb will come into his presence singing worthy the lamb worthy the lamb worthy the lamb come into his presence singing glory to god glory to god glory to god will come into his presence singing glory to god glory to god glory to god oh yes and we invite you holy spirit holy spirit our precious friend come come and be with us be with all of these who have just come these brothers and sisters on this August 20, August 20th. Wow. Just about to finish up this month. This year is really marching on by. <clears throat> so I welcome each and every one of you to the reading of the Word of God. To fill up yourself, yourself with His Word. Let Holy Spirit show you what He would have you know, what He would have you see. Ask him, and he will show you. Yes, he will. He will indeed. And here we have Melissa coming on, faithful as can be, with Kathy's graphics. Kathy, faithful as can be for the graphics, always updating when she can find something new. We appreciate you two ladies in this sweet ministry. So I encourage you, go see, because, oh, there have been some beautiful ones of the book of Esther. Wow, really depicting the story. And so that's where we are this morning, y'all. Let's get right to it, to Esther chapter 8, going through the 10th chapter, and that finishes today, the book of Esther. If you missed the other two days, I encourage you, go back to the beginning and read the whole thing and our little portion today starts out on that day. Really? What day was that? Well, let me show you and let me read to you just the tail end of what was yesterday. All right, so Esther is having her second banquet and she's invited just the king and just wicked Haman. And so they have the banquet and king and King asked Esther, what, what is her petition? He's, he asked her the day before. And so she tells him, please, 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 we have been sold, my people. We are to be destroyed, to be killed, to be annihilated. And the king says, well, who is he and where is he who would dare presume in his heart to do such a thing? And here is the climactic time of these two banquets. And so Esther says, the adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman. And Haman was terrified, okay? So the king rises up and he goes out in the garden. He's dealing with his wrath and he's probably thinking, what am I gonna do about this situation here? And inside, Haman is pleading with Queen Esther for his life. And when the king comes back in, Haman has thrown himself down on the couch where Queen Esther is begging. But the king sees it like he's attacking her. And attacking her what? To kill her? To molest her? To, I mean, just attacking. And so 
The king says, will he also assault the king, the queen, while I am in the house? And as the word left the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. Oh, those eunuchs were standing by just saying, oh, hallelujah, we got him now. We got him now. And I'm sure they are the ones because it says, now, now Harbona, one of the eunuchs said to the king, look, <laughs> he suggests the answer, okay? The gallows, 50 cubits high, which Haman made for Mordecai, who spoke good on the king's behalf. And it's standing at the house of Haman. And so the king said, hanging him on it. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. And then the king's wrath subsided. So now, make a little sense to read, on that day, King Ahasuerus gave Queen Esther the house of Haman. The enemy of the Jews and Mordecai came before the king, for Esther had told how he was related to her. So the king took off his signet ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it to Mordecai. And Esther appointed Mordecai over the house of Haman. Now Esther spoke again to the king, fell down at his feet, and implored him with tears to counteract the evil of Haman the Agagite and the scheme which he had devised against the Jews. And the king held out the golden scepter toward Esther. So Esther arose and stood before the king and said, If it pleases the king, and if I have found favor in his sight, you know, she said this before, if I have found favor. I'm sure that must have been what she and her maids had been praying during the three-day fast. That was what they needed, favor with the king to present this horrible situation. If I have found favor in his sight and the thing seems right to the king and I am pleasing in his eyes, she had to be. We were told she was beautiful, beautiful. And I am pleasing in his eyes. Let it be written to revoke the letters devised by Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, which he wrote to annihilate the Jews who are in all the king's provinces. For how can I endure to see the evil that will come to my people? Or how can I endure to see the destruction of my countrymen? And then King Ahasuerus said to Queen Esther and Mordecai the Jew, Indeed, I have given Esther the house of Haman, and they have hanged him on the gallows because he tried to lay his hand on the Jews. You yourselves write a decree concerning the Jews as you please in the king's name and seal it with the king's signet ring. For whatever is written in the king's name and sealed with the king's signet ring, no one can revoke. So the king's scribes were called at that time in the third month, the, one, the month which is the month of Sivan, on the 23rd day. And it was written according to all that Mordecai commanded to the Jews, the satraps, the governors, and the princes of the provinces from India to Ethiopia, 127 provinces in all, to every province in its own script, to every people in their own language, and to the Jews in their own script and language. And he wrote in the name of King Ahasuerus, sealed it with the king's signet ring, and sent letters by couriers on horseback, riding on royal horses, bred from swift steeds. Can't you just see them? I think of Paul Revere. Boom! And they're just running. I mean, we're sending a lot of 100 and 127 provinces. And as far away 
far away on horseback as India and Ethiopia. By these letters, the king permitted the Jews who were in every city to gather together and protect their lives, <clears throat> to destroy, kill, and annihilate all the forces of any people or province that would assault them, both little children and women, and to plunder their possessions on one day in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus on the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month of Adar. A copy of the document was to be issued as a decree in every province and published for all people so that the Jews would be ready on that day to avenge themselves on their enemies. The couriers who rode on royal horses went out, hastened and pressed on by the king's command, and the decree was issued in Shushan, the citadel. So Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white with a great crown of gold and a garment of fine linen and purple. Wow, can you picture that? <clears throat> and the city of Shushan rejoiced and was glad. Isn't that beautiful? See, there were more of them for the Jews, much more. But like we do, like we are doing today, we just are silent. We don't want our little world turned upside down. And my opinion is we should be marching again by the trillions, millions. Oh, I won't go there. Okay, I get excited that they're doing something about their problem. All right. The city of Shushan rejoiced and was glad. The Jews had light and gladness and joy and honor. Oh, hallelujah. And in every province and city, wherever the king's command and decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a holiday. Then many of the people of the land became Jews because fear of the Jews now fell on them. How about that? And we move along to the ninth chapter, nine. Now in the twelfth month, that is the month of Adar, on the thirteenth day, the time came for the king's command and his decree to be executed. On the day that the enemies of the Jews had hoped to overpower them, the opposite occurred. Oh, hallelujah. I hope to read that a lot in our day today, that the opposite occurs. In that the Jews themselves overpowered those who hated them. <clears throat> the Jews gathered together in their cities throughout all the provinces of King Ahasuerus to lay hands on those who sought their harm. And no one could withstand them because fear of them fell upon all people. And all the officials of the provinces, the satraps, the governors, and all those doing the king's work, Help the Jews, because the fear of Mordecai fell upon them. Now he is risen in the power, for Mordecai was great in the king's palace, and his fame spread throughout all the provinces. For this man, Mordecai, became increasingly prominent, <clears throat> and thus the Jews defeated all their enemies, with the stroke of the sword, with slaughter and destruction, and did what they pleased with those who hated them. And in Shushan, the citadel, the Jews killed and destroyed 500 men. Also, Parshadantha, Dalphan, Aspada, 
Porata, Adelaya, Aradatha, Parmasha, Arisi, Aradi, and Veyeshatha, the ten sons of Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the enemy of the Jews, they killed, but they did not lay a hand on that plunder. Belonged to them, didn't it? The king gave it all to Esther. Wow, I'm wondering what happened with the wife and the family. On that day, the number of those who were killed in Shushan, the citadel, was brought to the king. And the king said to Queen Esther, The Jews have killed and destroyed 500 men in Shushan, the citadel, and the ten sons of Ammon. What have they done in the rest of the king's provinces? Now, what is your petition? Wow! She has favor, favor, favor. He's asking again. What is your petition? It shall be granted to you. Or what is your further request? It shall be done. <clears throat> and then Esther said, If it pleases the king, let it be granted to the Jews who are in Shushan to do again tomorrow according to today's decree. And let Haman's ten sons be hanged on the gallows. So that's how all that came about. So the king commanded this to be done. The decree was issued in Shushan, and they hanged Haman's ten sons. And the Jews who were in Shushan gathered together again on the 14th day of the month of Adar and killed 300 men at Shushan. But they did not lay a hand on the plunder. They didn't touch anything else. Can you imagine this? Ten sons. The number of government destroyed. The, rem the remainder of the Jews in the king's provinces gathered together and protected their lives. They had rest from their enemies and they killed 75,000 of their enemies, but they did not lay a hand on the plunder. This was on the 13th day of the month of Adar, and on the 14th of the month they rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness. And you know, I can just see what a wise thing that is, because... After all these people have been killed, you've dealt with all that, you need a day to regain and restore your joy. Or depression just kind of lingers there, just from having done it, right? So they made it a day of feasting and gladness. Eat and get your body built up, fellowship together, have gladness. But the Jews who were at Shushan assembled together on the 13th day as well as on the 14th. And on the 15th of the month, they rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness. Therefore, the Jews of the villages who dwelt in the unwalled towns celebrated the 14th day of the month of Adar with gladness and feasting as a holiday and for sending presents to one another. And Mordecai wrote these things and sent letters to all the Jews near and far who were in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus to establish among them that they should celebrate yearly the 14th and 15th days of the month of Adar as the days on which the Jews had rest from their enemies as the month which was turned from sorrow to joy for them and from mourning to a holiday, that they should make them days of feasting and joy, of sending presents to one another and gifts to the poor. So the Jews accepted the custom which they had begun 
as Mordecai had written to them, because Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, the enemy of all the Jews, had plotted against the Jews to annihilate them and had cast purr, that is, the lot, to consume them and destroy them. But when Esther came before the king, he commanded by letter that this wicked plot, which Haman had devised against the Jews, should return on his own head, and that he and his sons should be hanged on the gallows. <clears throat> so they called these days Purim, after the name of casting the lots, pure. Therefore, because of all the words of this letter, what they had seen concerning this matter, and what had happened to them, the Jews established and imposed it upon themselves and their descendants and all who would join them that without fail they should celebrate these two days every year according to the written instructions and according to the prescribed time, that these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation, every family, every province, and every city, that these days of Purim should not fail to be observed among the Jews and that the memory of them should not perish among their descendants. And they celebrate it today, the Feast of Purim. Oh, Scott will come on someday near the time and tell us about it. And then Queen Esther, the daughter of Abihail, with Mordecai the Jew, wrote with full authority to confirm this second letter about Purim. And Mordecai sent letters to all the Jews, to the 127 provinces of the kingdom of Ahasuerus, with words of peace and truth, to confirm these days of Purim at their appointed time as Mordecai the Jew and Queen Esther, and in Hebrew it's Hadassah, Hadassah, Queen Hadassah had prescribed for them, and as they had decreed for themselves and their descendants concerning the matters of their fasting and lamenting. So the decree of Esther confirmed these matters of Purim, <clears throat> and it was written in the book. And we finish up here this great and glorious, marvelous book with chapter 10. And King Ahasuerus imposed tribute on the land and on the islands of the sea. <clears throat> now all the acts of his power and his might and the account of the greatness of Mordecai to which the king advanced him, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Media and Persia? For Mordecai the Jew was second to King Ahasuerus and was great among the Jews and well received by the multitude of his brethren, seeking the good of his people and seeking peace to all his countrymen. Oh, what a grand and glorious conclusion to this great book and get ready Get ready, because tomorrow we begin the book of Job. The book of Job. We're going to read every word. Hallelujah. Right now, we will move along to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, picking up with verse 27. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. <clears throat> Paul is teaching the church all about the gifts and how to obtain the fruits of the Spirit. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. And God has appointed these in the church. First, 
and it's in order. Apostles. Second, prophets. Third, teachers. And after that, miracles. Then gifts of healings. Both of those words are plural. Gifts of healings. Helps. Administrations. Variety of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the best gifts. And yet, I show you a more excellent way. And we come to the wonderful chapter 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. <clears throat> love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, and thinks no evil does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. Now, notice it doesn't say, <clears throat> we're going to do away with these gifts. So catch the words very carefully. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, <clears throat> but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. <clears throat> Pardon me. And now abide faith, Hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Isn't that beautiful? Woo! We could read that every day, every day, and drink it in, and then exhibit all of that. We move right along. <clears throat> to Psalm 37, another Psalm of David. Oh, first sentence. Take this in, Jane. 
Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. Well, we sure aren't envious, are they? Are we? For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. For evil doers shall be cut off. But those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look carefully for his place, but it shall be no more. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. They will delight themselves in the abundance of peace. What a beautiful psalm. Wow. <clears throat> Wonderful instruction in there for all of us today. We wrap up today's reading, y'all, with Proverbs 21, verses 23 and 24. Proverbs 21, verses 23 and 24. Whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from troubles. A proud and haughty man, scoffer is his name, he acts with arrogant pride. Arrogant pride. Wow. Take in those words. And I hope that you have your Bible and that you have markers to put in it. I would hope maybe you could find a one-year Bible and be able to follow along exactly with the same translation I'm reading. And this is the New King James Version, and it's arranged in 365 daily readings. So see, it's all laid out and then you have the next day of whatever month we are in. So when you finish on December 31st, you just go back to page one, start over again on January 1. And you will accomplish reading the entire body, uh, <laughs> entire Bible in one year. How many times have you wanted to do that and you'd start off pretty good and then it would, you know, one day would fall into another and you'd be very behind and then you'd get discouraged and then you, you wouldn't do it. That's the whole purpose. I'm not here to do anything more than to read the word about God. Get it out there while we still have peace in, in the land and can do it. Get it out there. And get you so interested in his word that you read your Bible without me. Without me. That's, that's the goal, y'all. That's the goal. And I pray that, that's, that you see that that's what's happening to you. I pray that 
That is, some of you, you are reading this again with me. I don't know. You've been here a couple of years. A couple of years. I asked Kathy how many years we've been doing this. And we kind of thought six. I don't know. <clears throat> then you, the rest of you, if you've saved year one <laughs> and you can figure it out, let us know. Because that's the beauty of this. You see, this doesn't say 2021 or any other year. It just says the month, the day. So it's timeless. All right, y'all, let's wrap it up in prayer. Father God, <clears throat> once again, we bless you for a brand new day. This is the day you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, Lord, for this little fellowship that gets together. We thank you, Lord, that as far as I know, most of you, you share it out with your friends, and I'm, maybe you don't even know how many of those friends. I mean, God, God's in charge. We have no idea how far this goes. And, and I don't want to make that my business. That's God's business. I just want to be obedient to get up, get dressed, be here on time, read the word, put it out there, and then it's recorded. And you can come anytime you want. Maybe you got interrupted. Well, later in the day, you can go back, pick up what you missed. Wow. These are, <laughs> the technology is awesome. And we, the church, should be using all the technology. It wasn't created for the devil and his bunch. The Lord allowed it to be created for his children to use, to win the world, to get the gospel out there to all the nations that they might hear. We don't want anybody to go to hell. Father, thank you for this. Thank you for the opportunities. Lord, we'd ask you to put many people across our lives' paths that we could witness to, that we could encourage, we could share more of the word. <clears throat> Lord, help us store it in our hearts, in our spirits. Help us, Holy Spirit, to call upon you when we need recall of some passage that would help someone. Father God, we hold up Israel. We hold up your people today, today. We thank you, Lord, that you have created and saw fit in your own timing for Israel to become a nation again. And you are bringing your people home from all across the earth. What an exciting time. Thank you, Lord, that we are here, that we can pray. We can ask, Lord, that you, you get them safely there, that angels are around every one of those planes, and that in spite of their fears of just saying, I have, I have a chance to move, I'm out of here, they come with so little. They can't carry much on the plane. Father God, help them. Let many, and I understand there are, there's many organizations, there's many <clears throat> people have stood in the airport and watched them greet them, cry and hold them and hug and sob and breaks my heart and yet there's joy to see them as they arrive, making Aliyah, making the trip to come back home and live on the land. Oh, thank you for it, Lord. Let there be peace. You've asked us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And we do, Lord. Let peace be everywhere in the city and all across that little tiny nation, particularly, Lord, the borders where they border right alongside their enemies. They are very brave people, very brave, to constantly be dealing with that. Lord, I hold up America, <clears throat> and I'd ask, Lord, that you would deal, Lord, with the wicked, that you would deal, 
that you would see fit now to pull them down and replace them, that the gospel light might go forth. And Lord, we know it goes forth. Many times we read how more souls are won under great persecution and troubles than in peace. We get complacent. Lord, stir up your church. Stir us all up to say I'm going to do more today than I've ever done. I'm going to give more. I'm going to look things up. I'm going to, I'm going to check out. I'm going to find out what's going on. I'm going to pray more. I'm going to fast more. Whatever, Lord, help us to dig deeper into the Christian commitment, the Christian life. <clears throat> Lord, we hold up Afghanistan. Oh, Lord, we hold up that country, that nation. And I heard encouraging words yesterday from uh, Steve Schultz. Had a missionary on and he proclaimed that Afghanistan would become a total Christian nation. Lord Jesus, we'd ask that you'd help them where they are today. Give them strength, Lord. Give them courage. Make many ways of escape, particularly, Lord, for the children, for the women. Lord, we'd ask that um, this would be the great chance to witness to the Taliban. When they're at their worst, to be able somehow, through your mighty ways, to bring the gospel to them. Lord, have your will, have your way. Have your will and way with our rulers in D.C. We'd ask, Lord, that the Holy Ghost would have a soon chance coming to come down on Washington, D.C. in a great flood of your Holy Ghost power. A great flood in that city. Lord, we have many people we are praying for, and we thank you. We know that you are listening to all the prayers. Many who need healing from illness, from diseases. Many, Lord, who are financially in a tough place, and they need to know how to correct that. Many, Lord, who are afraid, worried, Lord, that need to just come and be encouraged by Holy Ghost, by believers. They might be lifted up. We'd ask, Lord, that whatever the prayers are, that you would hear. And in your great goodness and mercy, you would bring answers to everyone. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, the Christ of Nazareth, and all of God's people, cried a hearty amen and had a beautiful day because you get a hold of it and make it a beautiful day. I love you all. Bye-bye.